<laughs> Megan hit him with the hair. <laughs> Good morning, Press. How you doing, baby? Y'all see Brandon? I'm telling. I'm telling. Yeah. How you doing, baby? Happy Wednesday. You ready? Is you ready? Wait, let me lock my door. Is you? Is you ready? And today on Coffee and Conversation with your girl, Shakenya. Hey, baby girl. My baby girl got to get them waves back. She been wearing this hat. I think I'm going to have to tell her about her stuff. Yeah, remember y'all that day? She had her hair all swoopy whooped. Yeah, I ain't seen that since that day. <laughs> Remember y'all, I made her my girlfriend. Hey, G, I'm on my way to you, baby. Hey, Tanisha, good morning, beautiful. I'm on my way to you, Jay, after uh, G, after coffee and conversation. Y'all, when y'all get a minute, go to my YouTube channel and hit Shakinya and hit sub subscribe. Yeah, I would like to see you. Because yeah, you was looking for me yesterday, weren't you? I know. <laughs> Shit. I know, yeah. You was looking for me yesterday. Yep, I got a couple subscribers since yesterday. Damn, they ain't got no cream. Oh. Hey. Let's see. So, yeah, guys. You know what? I had a couple things. Oh, there you go. That I wanted to talk to y'all about. But, you know, the spirit moves me. The spirit moves me. And, um, I kind of wanted to, uh, first off, your list. <laughs> Ain't nobody in here, y'all. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Your list. I know your list. Damn. Come Brandon. <laughs> God damn it. Hey, Rena. How you doing, baby? Thank you. Roberta Jarrett did the mask, baby. Look her up. Roberta Jarrett. And she also is a travel agent. Yes, she was on my radio show, Motor City Radio. She's a woman of many talents. So you might want to look her up. Roberta Jarrett did my mask. Yes. So, guys, I know your list is, uh, is long and ridiculous. I know. You got that dumb ass list. I know. I know. I know. I know. Because I told you, anybody that had contact with your baby needs to be on that list. So you did right. You did right. But we're going to cut it down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, we're we going to chop it down a little bit. I know you're nervous. We're going to chop it down a little bit. First of all, we're going to look at all, all your family members that you got on the list. We're going to look at all your family members. Now, you might have some shady individuals in, on your side of the family that just might be hateful enough, jealous enough, envious enough of you to try to turn your baby against you and manipulate your baby, yep. So they might talk about you when you ain't over there. I know, you, you might have a couple. But what are the odds of your baby encountering them all the time or in enough time for them to work they, they mood you? So I'ma help you. you. You gonna take most of the people on your side of the family off the list. And then wait, before you do it, wait, wait. Before, before, you, wait a minute, before you do it. it. It also depends on how you was raised too, how you came up, how your people's is, how, how the people talk around the kids when you was come. you know, you gotta take all, all that in consideration. Me, I was able to take off everybody on my side of the family off the list. Yeah, I was able to do that. Everybody, everybody. I was able to cut that list. I know dancing around, you got to dance around the list because you got to cut it down. You got to cut it down. So, even if you're still working on yourself, and even if you're still working on the baby and the baby daddy and baby mom and them, even if you're still working on those people, you can pretty much possibly take your people off the list. Yeah. I was able to remove my people because of how I was raised. Remember, y'all told you my mama had a substance abuse issue. So therefore, it was plenty of times where people could have said things about my mom that would have made me feel some kind of way about her. Okay? But when I tell you, 
Nobody on my mom's side ever discussed my mama's issues. And nobody on my dad's side never talked about my mama and used them as means of manipulation or any means to make me want to turn against my mama and not love her for being my mama. And bringing me in this world. I know. So I was able to take all of them off my list. I hope y'all ain't seen my boobies. God dang it. I hope y'all ain't seen my boobies. So yeah, I was able to take everybody off my list. On my side of the family. Yeah. So I hope that helped you a little bit. <laughs> Cause I know you got that dumb ass list. <laughs> and you trying to figure out how to narrow it down. So you can do that. I can tell you to do that. You can do that. Oh my goodness, I feel so bad. I hope y'all ain't seen nothing. God dang it, this is a Christian show. Shoot. But yeah, guys. I wanted to talk to y'all today because that wasn't even what I wanted to talk to y'all about. Rena, can you see my... Did I show my bosoms? Because you know I wasn't trying to do that. If you're still watching. Because if so, I got to come up off of here and delete it. Oh, ain't nobody going to say nothing. Gee, is you still watching? God darn it. Anyway, I wanted to know, how did y'all go about teaching y'all children like certain... Just the coffee, baby girl. Like, I'm trying to see how I can actually ask the question. Because I want to say instilling values and morals. I want to say instilling certain characteristics. I want to say just the things that you want your children to be. Like, how do you go about, there you go, baby, about doing those things. Here with the coffee. I know how to get it. I know how to say it. You know how you tell your children that you want them to be anything and they can be anything? How do you go about helping them develop the confidence to believe in themselves that they can? Thank you. Have a good one. See you, Brandon. Did I hope I did it right? You good? I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for checking in, fam. I tell you, because people will let me walk around with my boobies out, don't give a damn, and then come back on here and talk about me, and then they'll miss the whole goddamn message. Excuse me, fix it, Jesus. Didn't mean to say that. Um, yeah, so how do you go about doing that? I know. I know you probably tell them all the time. Yeah, you can do this. You can do that. You can be anything you want to be. I'm trying to get in, guys. I'm sorry. There we go. Here I is. Make sure my nose is tight. I'm tight. I'm tight. Okay. Yeah, so how do you guys go about doing that? How do you go about helping them instill that confidence in themselves that they can be whatever? They can be the next president. They can. Because I'm going to be honest. We're not doing such a good job. And I'm that off of the attitude adjustment youth program because it's an exercise that I do with the kids when they come in that asks them simple question what do you want to be when you grow up and if that doesn't work what's your plan B when I tell you every last one of the little boys that come through my program <laughs> They plan A is always football player, basketball player. They plan B, if that doesn't work, they want to be a doctor, lawyer. <laughs> Some of them still want to be a foot. If they was a basketball player for their plan A, if that don't work, then they plan B is going to be a, foot, a basketball or a football player, the complete opposite of whatever it was. <laughs> I know. So it, it leads me to believe that we possibly are not... Um, if we are telling our kids that they can do anything in the world and they can be anything in the world, that we're missing something or they're missing something. So either you're telling them and then you're just telling them and you're not really doing nothing to like back it up and help them or I don't know. That's, that's the only thing I could I came up with this morning. <laughs> so I don't know. I just wonder how do you go about doing it? Like for me, for instance. 
because I can only use me as an example. I want my children to be knowledgeable about politics, the world of politics. I actually want to run for office, haven't decided where or what I want to run for, but it's definitely in my um, in my future. Um, it's probably going to take place after I get the second book out because part of getting my books out was so that people will know who I am. Um, they would know my past. They would know my present. They would know the things that they need to know about me. That way it kind of haunts and deters the people that want to jump out and display everything that's in my closet. <laughs> that way when they vote for me, they'll know exactly what they're getting in office. And I'm hoping that everything that I've done in these past 17 years or plus be enough to get me in. So therefore... I want my children to be knowledgeable about politics, the inner workings of politics, um, if they ever would like to be um, in that world. I was like, so what I did was I worked on a few campaigns, first for self, so that I can have a little more knowledge and background of how to get there, the process of it all, the whole nine. So um, as I do that, I brought my children with me. Yep. So I, I worked on a few campaigns. Kennedy actually did cause at on Handsome Clark's campaign. I know. That's when she first learned how. I'll say she didn't do them. I did them, but she was there to watch me do them. So she was very well versed when it came to how to call people and let them know about the people that are running. I know. So I, um, I had them around. So they would go with me, all of them. All the kids would go with me when we did the blocks, when we passed out the flyers, when we stood up at the locations, they would come to me to the, yeah, so every time that I'm involved in a campaign, um, Lisa Howes, y'all see that picture that we took? They, they helped with that, that campaign. Um, who else? It was Hanson Clark, um, Lisa Howes, uh, Reggie Reg Davis, when he was running, I helped on his campaign. Um, who else? I want to say Kenneth. Kenneth and I cannot think of his last name right now but when he ran I, it's a couple of them it's a couple camp so I you know for me to learn and have the knowledge as well as my children so I had them exposed to that so that they can be more knowledgeable and if they ever wanted to do it they could be um every time we had an event it was important for me for my children to know what it feels like to give back and know the importance of giving back knowing that it's not all about money and the best way to illustrate that and demonstrate that is to myself volunteer and have my children volunteer. So any event that we had, any type of affair, um, anything that was going on that involved the nonprofit that I was affiliated with, um, my children had no choice but to volunteer. I model. So I feel it's very important uh, for my children to know that it's possible for them to model if that's something that they ever want to do. So I made sure that when I do photo shoots, uh, anything that I'm involved when it comes to modeling and acting, because that's another thing that, that I do, um, I make sure they are involved. So they have been on photo shoots, they've had photo shoots of their own, they've been with me on different shoots so that they can know what it is, what it feels like, if this is something that they would like to do, something that they would like to pursue. Um, modeling might not have been what they want to do. I know Ken went to a session, and although she went as the model, she was more fascinated with behind the scenes and with the camera. So was Kelly. Kelly was a little fascinated with the camera, with the taking of the pictures too. So even though they are both gorgeous and beautiful enough to be models, that might not be where they want to be or what they want to do, but I made sure they were exposed to the whole world of it. So whether they want to model, whether they want to do photography, whether they wanted to just be uh, whatever, I let them know that it's possible. They can do it. I wrote a book. I said I was going to do it, and I did. Dysfunctional Family Not. You can get your copy on lulupublishes.com. <laughs> yeah, so if they ever had any aspirations of being an author, wanting to publish a book, um, I wrote one so that they know that it's possible and they can do it. So I just wanted to tap in just to see yep, my radio show, Motor City Radio, which comes on every Friday at 7 p.m., by the way. Um, they've been on the radio show with me. Y'all seen early videos and video clips of them um, where if that's something that they wanted to do, they could. Yep. I know. Entrepreneurship. 
Yep, I've started two businesses, um, and I made sure that the children were a part of them from the ground up so that they'll know um, not only the inner workings of how to run a business, but how to work your business. Yep. Sorry, guys. Meaning that not only did I show them what it takes to start it from the ground up, but also they were working for the company and for the business. I know, <laughs> I know. So they know how. So if any of my children are entrepreneurs, that's something that I wanted to open up to them because although I wanted all my children to go off to college, college is not for everybody. So therefore you have to make sure that there are other avenues and other things put in place for your child so they can still succeed, even if it's not the path that you want them to be on. So although I wanted my children to go off to college and be whoever they wanted to be, it was also important for me to make sure that they had the knowledge of entrepreneurship. That way, if they ever wanted to start their own business, they can do so. So my children are probably close enough to where they can all probably write a business plan if they wanted to. Kelly might be a little sketchy, but if you come at her with what a mission or a vision statement is, she probably can roll off to you what it might mean. You know what I'm saying? Just off of the uh, being around us and being around the business aspect of it and hearing us talk to one another. So she probably picked it up, but I haven't had that conversation. You know, she was kind of pulled out early in the game. Yeah, so it's kind of hard. I know some of you parents are feeling it. I know you feel some kind of way because you think about everything that you started with your children and as a result of somebody taking them out your life. Life, all the things that will not get finished because you know other people ain't doing it I know I know so therefore yeah she was at that point where I was um about to teach her about the business plan because she had started working the business so she was learning and she know you know she know what it looked like from us not having no buildings till we we in there cleaning schools you know what I'm saying yeah I had a couple schools I had the Birmingham Municipal Center so it was like to go from not having you know no buildings and then just one building so we got keys and we, we pushing alarm codes to schools you know they know it's possible the youth program it was sketchy at first. Yeah, that picture that we took that day, that was the first day that I did open enrollment for the youth program and nobody came. Nobody came. So for my children to see me there at that point where we have our first event and nobody came to they see their mama on channel two and channel four promoting that same program, you know, that's inspirational for them. You know what I'm saying? To know that my daughters have been to the prison with the program, to know that they have worked as mentors to be a part of the program so they know how the program works and how it runs and the importance of why I do what I do. It's very important for you to expose your children to different things if you want them to know and be confident that they can do anything. So, y'all, that's it for Coffee and Conversation. I know it was a long one, guys. I just wanted to talk to somebody on my way to my meeting. I'll see you in a minute, G. I'm out.